In a world where we celebrate individuality and human rights, how did a woman named Sarah Bartman, often referred to as Sarti, find herself cruelly paraded around European stages, her very identity and dignity stripped away from her? Today, we unravel the shocking exploitation and profound injustice faced by this Quasin woman, only to be thrust into a life of objectification and degradation. Dive deep with us into her heart-wrenching story and join us in our quest for truth. Would you, as a spectator, have been complicit or compassionate? Let's discover together. Sarah Bartman, often known as Sayarchi, was given the name Sesihira when she was born. She was born in the Gamtus Valley in South Africa's Eastern Cape. Both of her parents came from an indigenous Kwasan background. The precise year that Bartman entered this world is unknown, although historians place his birth somewhere around the year 1789. Her mother passed away when she was only two years old, and her father was killed by Bushmen while he was herding cattle when she was a teenager. Both of her parents passed away while she was still a little child. After the deaths of her parents, Bairdman was renamed Sarchi by her new master, a Dutch trader by the name of Peter Willem Caesar. Sarchi is a diminutive variant of the name Sarah in the Dutch language. She was sent to Cape Town, where she worked as a domestic servant for at least two years after she had already resided there. Bartman was a wet nurse for Peter Caesar's brother, Hendrik Caesar's, after she had a kid who unfortunately passed away while still an infant. Hendrik Caesar started treating Bartman in the city hospital so that he might make a little additional money. Alexander Dunlop, a Scottish military surgeon who lived in that area, was employed at the Cape Slave Lodge and also had a side business supplying animal specimens to showmen in Britain. He took an interest in the naturally curvy physique that Bartman possessed. Statotopagia is a condition in which significant amounts of fat collect in the buttocks and thighs, as was the case with Bartman. She was also known by the disparaging name Hottentot Venus, which was a reference to the Greek goddess of fertility, and so commences the tale of a woman afflicted by a disease, transformed into an exhibit. Yet who were the masterminds orchestrating this disturbing spectacle? And was her role confined solely to being displayed within the exhibition's confines? The answer is a resounding no. Sarah endured a plethora of unthinkable, unethical activities. Stay engaged, for you are about to witness the revelation of one of humanity's darkest facets. This was due to the fact that she had labia that were unusually lengthy. Her appearance was typical of Kwasan people, yet for some observers, it was an exotic and sexually alluring projection. Dunlop spotted an opportunity to take advantage of her and started putting pressure on Bartman to go to Europe and generate money by exhibiting herself there as a model. Bartman had no interest in the matter. After much persuasion from Dunlop, Bartman gave in and said she would go, but on the condition that Hendrik Caesars also went. He originally refused, but in 1810, he eventually gave down and consented to travel. Due to Bartman's lack of literacy, it is not known if she comprehended the contract that was presented to her and whether she went freely or whether she was forced. Dunlop promoted her by claiming that she was a natural anomaly placing her on display at Piccadilly Circus in London while she was wearing skin-tight apparel in flesh tones, beads and feathers, and smoking a pipe. Anyone may pay one shilling to see her body while she was only partially clothed. Those individuals who were willing to pay a somewhat higher amount were granted permission to touch her. According to some documents, the tremendous interest that men had in Bartman's derriere was the inspiration for the bustle fashion trend that was popular in the Victorian era. An uproar was made among abolitionists as a result of Bartman's decision to continue his exhibition in London after the Slave Trade Act of 1807. The act put an end to the commerce in slaves, but did not abolish slavery itself. As a result of the uproar that was produced by the Dutchman's display of an enslaved lady, the African Association, which was a British abolitionist society, demanded that she be set free. Hendrix Caesars voiced his objections and asked, has she not as good a right to exhibit herself as an Irish giant or a dwarf? In response, after being left unsatisfied, the association filed a lawsuit against Caesars and Dunlop. The interview with Bartman took place in private and lasted for a total of three hours. She testified in favor of Dunlop, saying that she was not being confined, that she had not been subjected to sexual assault, that she had been working in London for profit of her own free will, and that she had no wish to return to her family. Her testimony was persuasive, even though the judge in the case concluded that Bay Artman had been forced to make a statement, he was forced to throw out the case because he had no other choice. The publicity that was given to the case helped boost the popularity of Byertman's display, 
which then gradually began to lose steam in the nation's capital. After that, her display was carried on tour around Britain, and it eventually ended up in Limerick, Ireland in the year 1812. In the autumn of 1814, Bartman was brought to France by Caesars and introduced to members of the French social elite before being sold to a man named Henry Taylor. After that, Taylor parted ways with her and sold her to an animal trainer by the name of Jean Rio. According to reports, Rio was the most ruthless of all of Bartman's owners. He exhibited her at the Palace Royal in Paris under more pressurized conditions for 15 months, effectively enslaving her during that time. In these circumstances, according to the author of The Hot and Taut Venus, The Life and Death of Sir Archie Bartman, Rachel Holmes by Artman began to engage in heavy drinking and smoking, and it is possible that Roe Axe also forced her into prostitution. Bartman's story is told in the book The Hot and Taut Venus, The Life and Death of Sarchi Bartman. In the past, Bartman's display consisted of her singing and dancing, but when Roe Axe was in charge, she was treated like an animal and led around. She was seen by painters and zoologists alike, both of whom desired to conduct research on her in order to advance scientific racism and as an object of sexual uniqueness. As a result, she became the focus of many people's gazes. In addition to that, she was displayed at the gatherings of the wealthy. She died at the age of 26 in 1815 from an inflammatory and eruptive condition, possibly syphilis rendered worse by drunkenness. Bartman's smoking and drinking got progressively worse before she passed away. The naturalist George's Cuvier decided against doing a traditional autopsy on Bartman's body in order to identify the cause of her passing. Instead, he decided to produce a plaster cast of her body and dissect her, first conserving her bones and then pickling her brain and genitalia. After that, they were shown to the public as exhibits at the Museum of Man in Paris, where they stayed on view for the duration of the museum's existence in 1974. Cuvier wrongly said that her physical parts indicated her sexual primitivism and intellectual equality with that of an orangutan. These body parts were displayed as evidence of Cuvier's thesis on racial evolution. His intention was to formalize a social order that placed black people at the bottom of the hierarchy, next to animals and white people at the top. This was a prevalent ideology during that time period. The reality, however, was quite the opposite since Bartman possessed a high level of intelligence and was fluent not only in her mother tongue, but also in Dutch, English, and even a little bit of French. Nelson Mandela, then the president of South Africa, made a request for her bones and a plaster cast in the year 1994. After having initially raised objections, the government of France eventually gave in and consented in March of 2002. In August of the same year, 187 years after she had passed away, her body was laid to rest in the town of Hankey, which is located in the province of Eastern Cape. As we bid farewell to the tragic tale of Sarah Bartman, let her story serve as a haunting reminder of the injustices of the past and the urgent need for empathy and understanding in the present. We hope it has ignited a passion for justice and compassion within each of you.